next step I had in my life was the um, pilgrimage. Um, the pilgrimage, what the pilgrimage I felt taught me was to appreciate the simple things I had in my life. And like something like going to the icebox and getting a glass of water, cold water. Something like uh, driving to Roppongi, even if I'm sitting in traffic for two hours. I'm still driving. I'm still sitting down, listening to music in air condition. Maybe going on the internet on my phone, you know, I, I mean, I, there's so many things I can do. In the, in the pilgrimage, what happens is you, you, I have a house, I have a car, I have a lot of family. I mean, Ichizoku that I have in, in Japan, but that all becomes zero. And all of a sudden, you're on the lowest level of society, almost homeless. Finding a place to sleep every night, wondering what you're gonna, when you're going to be able to eat again. Um, knowing you, you have 1,400 kilos to walk. You're not gonna be, I wouldn't even try to drive that, you know, it's like, like almost walking from Saitama to Osaka and back. And you know, so it's, it's like, you're at the lowest level of society. You don't have anyone to take you to dinner. You don't have any money to go play games at the game center. Um, you're literally stripped of everything you have. And what happened with that pilgrimage, it, it taught me that, you know, something like, when so a la old lady gave me a piece of bread when I was walking in, the bread tasted so good. Something that I probably wouldn't have ate at home. If I had a piece of bread, I probably would like a little tuna to mix in the bread, or make some egg to mix with the bread, you know. I mean, I, I would never have thought of eating the bread. But something that I totally disregarded as something to be good in my life, I, it was something I cherished in, in the pilgrimage. So I learned in the pilgrimage about the simple things in my life that I need to appreciate. And I believe in life, there's three circles you have. One circle is things that don't matter to you. Like say, um, the weather, whether there's, how much clouds there are in the sun dry. Um, taking a bath at night, going to bed in your bed. So that really doesn't matter. It doesn't make you happy, but it doesn't irritate you. And then there's another circle of things that irritate you, traffic. Um, guys that cut in line when you're lining up in the pharmacist. Um, and then there's another circle. The circle is things that make you happy, like meeting a hot chick, um, going out to the clubs and hanging out with your friends, listening to good music, you know. And what the pilgrimage did for me was something incredible that when I came back, my whole life is so much better now. I'm so much happier because what happened was the circle of things that didn't matter to me, almost half of that, became things that made me happy. A cup of water, you know, having someone pick me up to go, even if we're sitting in traffic. Um, what we're lining up, even we're lining up in a pharmacist with a lot of people and lining up and the old lady in front of you is taking super long where the change is up. It's, I don't have to walk eight hours today. I mean, I can go to the, get some McDonald's. Um, and what's five minutes out of my day, man? I walked eight, 10, 10 to 12 hours a day. I mean, five minutes, I'm standing in the aircon and I'm lining up to buy a drink. You know what I mean? What, what is there to complain about? With five minutes to wait for this old lady that's taking her time? No big deal. You know, so the circle of things that didn't matter to me made me happy. And the, the circle of things that irritated me is like half of that moved into the circle of the things that didn't matter anymore. So the circle of irritation became very small. The circle that didn't matter to me stayed the same. But the circle of happiness, the things that made me happy, got huge. And I feel it today in, in my life that, you know, there's a lot of things that I'd be frustrated or irritated about. That I'm sitting there and like, no big deal, you know. I mean, even guys, three guys cut into line when I'm standing in line for something. It's like, you know, if one, I, if I think, okay, that guy must be in a huge rush. Two, he's probably got impatience that's going to really make him suffer in life from this day on. And three, I thought, yeah, longest is what, 10, 15 minutes I'm going to wait longer? I mean, that's nothing. That's nothing for me. 10, 15 minutes in a lifetime isn't nothing. And so the pilgrimage made my life better, made me happy. But the most important thing is the pilgrimage made me feel what the next phase of my life that I didn't see coming made me understand more is the, the people in Tohoku that lost everything in their life.
you know, so I'm not, I can't, I will never say that I'm in that, I was in that same situation because it was my choice to be on the pilgrimage. But I can feel more than the normal person for these people in the North that lost everything in their life. I mean, you know, for me, bringing up water, bringing up cigarettes or bringing up something, some fruits or even like toothpaste, body shampoo. To these people, before I went on the pilgrimage, I would think, bringing that kind of stuff is, what, what's the sense? You know, it's like, big deal if they, I give them a, some hansel. But then I guess in the pilgrimage from being in that situation and being able to appreciate things so simple, people like offer me a bed to sleep in for the night, something that I never worried about for my whole life. I never ever thought, thought of worrying about sleeping or I'm gonna sleep. And all of a sudden, this just became like the greatest thing in my life. I wanted to hug this person that offered me to sleep in their bed, in, the, in their futon. And, you know, I, what happened was it, it made me understand what these people, as close as I can, I think, I don't think totally, what these people in the North were going through. And it made, gave me more of a desire to, to go out of my way and spend my own money and go up to the North, even if it's just a, a carload of ramen or a carload of water, you know just knowing how this could impact these people that had nothing. You know, you see, the thing is, is I'm human. When it first happened, my parents, the pressure from my parents, the pressure from everything, everyone wanted me to come home. But for some reason, something about me, I knew I wasn't going to go home because I knew Japan was my home. My mom was strong about me leaving. Just get out of there. Why do you need to be there anymore? And it, it's, it's hard to explain to her because she's been in Hawaii for her whole life. That's her home. That's her love. And it's hard to explain to her that, you know, I love Japan and I'm here for good. And I decided not to leave, you know, so it, it was really hard. It was, it was hard because I, I hate to say this, but I actually went down to Kyoto to my Kyoto gym. The first, when it first happened, the radiation leaked, the, when it came out three days later, the radiation leaked, the news about that came out, about, you know, the fear, the, the fear about radiation came. I actually, be, because of the pressure of my mom, I went, I like to use that as an excuse, the pressure of my mom. I think it was a part of me being fearful about radiation too. But I, I'm gonna, to my death, they say it was because of the pressure of my mom. I went down to Kyoto. I went down to Kyoto, and I have a gym in Kyoto. I had a gym in Kyoto. So I went to Kyoto and I spent the time there because of the radiation thing. And two things hit me. Um, as my mom, they were tell, actually asking me to, since I'm not gonna fly home, they're gonna pay for me to go to Okinawa. <laughs> they wanted me to go that far. The thing that happened to me was I had a, um, there was a gangster event I was supposed to be at in the March, end of March. So it was right after the event, I mean the, the earthquake and everything. I called the person and they said that the event's canceled. And I said, why is the event canceled? It's because everyone's up north. And that hit me. I was saying, wait a minute. They went up north to help the people in the north and I'm down here driving the opposite way to Kyoto. Considering myself this man, I'm from Namashi, and I'm thinking to myself, damn, it wasn't pressure from them. It just woke me up thinking like, you know what? What is this Yamut Namashi about, man? It's about doing the right thing. And in my heart, it hurt me to think that I'm driving the opposite way while these guys are driving towards danger. I think to myself, you know what? I deliberated a lot. And the biggest thing I had was disappointing my family, my mother and my father. And I sat there in Kyoto and it, every time, every minute I thought about it, it hurt me. Thinking that, you know, this is not where I should be. I mean, I gotta be up there helping these people. So I made a decision that I was gonna go up there. And it was, it took me, it took two weeks. To be honest, it took two weeks to me to actually realize where I really wanted to be and realize that I didn't want to suffer knowing that I wasn't doing the right thing anymore. And that's when I packed everything up and the, picked up the stuff that I heard that they needed. Water was, was really ridiculous. It was water and food. And you know those big batteries, which I couldn't find any of? Those are the things that they needed, that's it. So that's what I did, loaded everything up with that. And just went on a, on a like a one-man mission and just drove up. And the thing that I thought was the reason why I could do that one-man mission because I knew people up there because I lived in Tohoku. 
so I knew a couple guys up there that wanted to check on and visit and bring stuff for them. And just be, because of the pilgrimage and because of the, 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 the prison experience, it, I got caught up in the whole thing about helping the people.